Hi, boys and girls. This is Mrs. Gloom, and today I'm going to be reading Fievel's Flying Horses by Heidi Smith Hyde, illustrated by Johanna Van de Steer. Fievel came to America with five dollars in his pocket. He had to leave his wife Goldie and his four children behind when he crossed the sea in search of a better life. Don't worry, Papa. I'll protect the family while you're gone, said Herschel, his proud oldest son. And I will carve wood to earn extra money, said Shmuel, his gentle youngest boy. I will dance to lift Mama's spirit, said Sasha, his little prima ballerina. Lena, only a baby, was too young to even say goodbye. Fievel knew it would be months, even years, before he could earn enough money to arrange passage for his family. By the time they were reunited, Lena would probably be a young lady, and Shmuel a grown man. In the old country, Fievel, his father, and his grandfather had been woodcarvers. They had carved the ornate reading desk that held the Torah scrolls and the fearsome lines that guarded the holy arks and synagogues throughout their province. In New York, he found work as a furniture maker on the Lower East Side. Instead of carving lines and eagles, Fievel spent his days making tables, chairs, and dressers. In his spare time, he carved combs for fashionable ladies. It was hard work, but Fievel didn't mind. With each finished piece, he knew he was one step closer to sending for his family. One day, his cousin Mikael suggested an outing. On the beach in Brooklyn, there is an amusement park called Coney Island with games of chance, Ferris wheels, and fortune tellers. They say there are so many electric lights that at night it glows like a million stars. Fortune tellers? Glittering lights? Fievel had never heard of such a place. I don't think so, Mikael. I need to save my pennies. In that case, I will treat you. We'll go this weekend. That Sunday morning, the two hopped on the trolley to Coney Island. As he stepped off the trolley, Fievel pinched himself to make sure he wasn't dreaming. Food stands, dance halls, and game parlors lined the boardwalk. He had never seen so many smiling faces. Fievel gazed in wonderment at the colorful clowns and fortune tellers who roamed the streets. For five cents, you could throw a ball into a hoop and win a giant purple doll. Right before his eyes, a man was being shot out of a cannon. Children on the roller coaster shrieked with excitement. In the distance, Fievel heard organ music. He followed the sound to a magnificent wooden carousel. Its beautifully carved horses seemed to leap through the air, each creature adorned with its sparkling jewels, flashing buckles and flowing ribbons looked like something out of the most wonderful dream. Fievel remembered a little music box he had seen as a child. When it was opened, a glittering carousel appeared, and horses danced round and round to the music. Come, Fievel, let's get something to eat. I'm hungry, said Mikael. But Fievel was unable to tear himself away. Gazing at the brilliantly painted chariots with their gold and silver leaf, he thought, How I wish I could create something like this with my chisel and brush, something that children would cherish. And that's when he saw the sign, Wanted, Experienced Woodcarver. Rushing into the shop, Fievel applied for the job and was hired. As the chief apprentice to the owner, Mr. Sumner Nathanson, Fievel was entrusted with the task of carving and embellishing the horses for the next Coney Island carousel. As he worked, Fievel sang songs from the old country, Tumbala, Tumbala, Tumbala Laika, Tumbala Laika, Happy Will Be. What are you singing? asked Averin, a younger apprentice. It's a love song I sang to Goldie when we first met, Fievel answered wistfully. Remembering his wife's silky hair, Fievel put the finishing touches on his first horse, a glorious creature with a long golden mane as bright as sunshine. I shall call this horse Goldie, he announced. Then he carved her name in tiny letters beneath the saddle. He hoped Mr. Nathanson wouldn't mind. And then he thought of his son Herschel as he carved the next horse. 
a restless beast whose speed and power made him stand out. My eldest son is a proud young man, he told Avram. Make sure you paint the horse a regal blue color. It took Five a long time to complete his third horse, a kind, gentle creature. He etched deer in its bridle in honor of Shemuel, his youngest son, whose days were spent in the forest carving wood. Day and night, Fivel toiled away in the carousel shop, carving, sanding, painting, and chiseling. On Shabbat, he rested. Sometimes he went to the synagogue and sang blessings and prayers. The closer he came to completing his carousel, the louder he sang. His next horse was festooned with flowers and ribbons. My Sasha's a dancer, Fivel told Avron. So lively and so graceful, always pirouetting across the floor. Someday she will be a prima ballerina. You shall see. But Lena's horse was the most striking of all. Lena, his precious baby, whose laughing eyes shone like gemstones. One by one, Fivel cemented hundreds of glass jewels onto the horse until it glittered like the sun. Then he carved her name in tiny letters beneath the saddle. For my sweet baby, who is no longer a baby, he said with a sigh. It took Fivel three years to complete the carousel. Cousin Mikael and his family came to watch as Mr. Nathanson turned it on for the very first time. Papa, look at the horses fly round and round, sh shouted Mikael's son. Cousin Fivel's carousel is a circle that never ends. Tears glistened in Fivel's eyes as his beautiful horses galloped gracefully in the air, among them Goldie, Herschel, Shmuel, Sasha, and Lena. Some of the horses were gentle and some were fierce. Some spoke of happiness and love, some of sadness and loss. Aren't you going to ride the carousel, Fivel? asked Mr. Nathanson. Fivel shook his head. No, thank you, Mr. Nathanson. I prefer to wait until my wife and four children are here to enjoy it with me. With the wages you've paid me, I've saved enough money to send for my family. And when, at last, Fivel's family arrived in America, they rode the carousel together, and the circle was complete. <laughs>